Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. In this segment, we're talking about spend down protection in retirement with retirement specialist Steve Bishop Welch. Come to the show, Steve. Uh, thank you, Steve. I'm glad to be here. How long have you been in this business? Wow. August the 6th, 1971, 45 years when and I worked with my father in Atlanta. Your father was also in the financial services yes, business. He was. And now you have a son in the financial yeah. services business. Our oldest son, Stephen, he's uh, working with me 18 years now. Unbelievable. It's been uh, three generations of family. We're talking about 100 years of service yeah, here. You're right. I also noticed you did some time with the Navy. Yeah, I was uh, very fortunate. Uh, I was in the Naval Reservist and uh, in active for two years and then six, six years for the Navy. Well, thank you for your service, sir. You're welcome. When I think about spend down money in retirement, you know, protection, right. I know what I mean, but what do you mean? Well, let's kind of think about that. Well, when we start thinking about spending down, we're, we're talking about protecting your assets. Well, mm -hmm. you think about this. You work 30, 40 years and you save, and guess what? What happens, you, uh, you become ill, and mm -hmm. uh, you actually uh, need long-term care. But guess what, you don't have a long-term care policy. Well, the problem with spend down is this, that guess what? Basically, before the, before the uh, uh, Medicaid could ever step in, basically, you're gonna have to spend down your, your assets. Mm -hmm. And really, the, that was your plan. But really, the fact of that is that there, there's some dilemma when we do use spend down, mm -hmm. basically, so let's think about that. I, I have this conversation with clients. I say, well, you know what? The, 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 less, the less risk might be is, is that you die. Mm -hmm. well, well, what do you mean die? Well, basically meaning that, it's, let's just say that, you know, that you and your wife have uh, worked hard all your years and you've saved, and then what happens? You actually become uh, incapacitated and you need long-term care. Well, you go through your assets, but then what the problem with spend down is that basically your, your, uh, your, your wife can only have one house, one car, they can only have an income of about $2,500 per month. And say, let's just say you accumulate a half million dollars over your life in savings. You can only retain $119,200. Mm -hmm. So spend down, and there, are, there are ways of planning. Mm -hmm. that, so that, that's, the key. that's our whole key for us to have this discussion about spend down planning. Okay, so now in your experience, and you've been in this thing for almost for like a little over four decades, <laughs> most people don't want to spend down. They want to have some assets, and they don't, yes, and they, they want do. to preserve preserve them if they can. You're exactly right. I just looked at the Fidelity report. Fidelity says, look, 71% of seniors today are using some form of long-term care and assisted living. Right. So either they have the cash to do it, not very many do. Right. Some people are using their home equity loan, uh, right. but not that many people have that much equity. Right. So planning for incidences that could erode my assets is a major issue amongst Americans. And on top of everything I just said, I've noticed that longevity now is the number one risk it in is. retirement. It so, really is. so how do I take care of that? How can I preserve my assets, not spend down? And if I need to qualify for a little bit of help, I want to qualify for it. But I, I got to tell you, I did a tour of... Uh, uh, of a uh, long-term care state facility, I was not that no, impressed. You, no, you're not. That's that's why you don't work for 30 or 40 years to, to end that that way. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what you can do? You can purchase long-term care. And when I say purchase, when I say purchase, that means there is a cost for that. Mm -hmm. But one little uh, known uh, items that we find that most people don't realize, that there is life insurance. But why in the world would anybody want to buy life insurance? Because life insurance products do come along now mm -hmm. that they have a long-term care rider or they could have a long-term care without any cost. Mm -hmm. So we think that's a great alternative because basically if you did purchase long-term care, and I'm mm -hmm. not saying that individuals shouldn't purchase long-term mm -hmm. long care, but I think there's a strategy where basically what if we did purchase long-term care and let's just say that we, uh, we paid long-term care for say for for 30 years and we paid $8,000 a year. Well, guess what we've done? We've just spent a, almost a quarter of a million dollars of our assets, plus what we could have earned in that $240,000. So I think 
one of the items mm -hmm. we talk that that we have a discussion with is that let's look at that. Do you have long term care, or how about this? Can you even qualify for mm -hmm. that? Well, now that's a, that's my thought. You know, I'm thinking, can I qualify for a traditional standalone? long-term care policy and I have to say based on the market today I mean that market has shrunk there's only sure. about what, sure. 10 carriers left I think that actually sells single standalone um, uh, policies now you brought up having a long-term care rider right. with a life insurance contract and I also know that they yeah. have annuities that'll do the same They're exactly so right. I don't know which one works the best and you're right a lot of seniors can't qualify when well, by the time they get to you right. maybe it's too late because they can't qualify for a traditional long-term care policy well let's kind of think about that let's just say that you've got a, 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 a 401k or an IRA and you do a transfer into an annuity well let's just say that annuity was going to be creating say $5,000 a month of income mm -hmm. when you decide to start taking income from that. Well, with these, with these uh, uh, fixed index annuities that we actually use today, basically, if you cannot perform any two of those six activities of daily living, which qualifies you for your long-term care to step in, guess what happens? These, that $5,000 mm -hmm. per month will double mm -hmm. for, uh, to $10,000 a month up to a, possibly a five-year benefit, which in essence, most people are not in long-term care mm -hmm. facilities for five mm -hmm. years. Okay, but then, now this is truly using it for elder care. That's why the right. benefit becomes huge. Right. But it's only for elder care. Right. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, I'm kind of I got my vision now <laughs> of uh, of retirement. And uh, Steve, right. to be honest with you, uh, Steve does not want to be in a nursing home. So I'm no. hoping to do my assisted home living. Do That's these pick exact. up this? Do these contracts oh, yeah. do this? Most most definitely. We the companies we use it's it's a home health care double. Mm -hmm. Whether whether you're, you're at home, and let's think about that. Steve, I'm like you, I would rather be at my home and have, mm -hmm. have a nurse come in three or four times a week to kind of assist mm -hmm. my wife than me going to a nursing home. Really, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's a great a advantage of having this mm -hmm. type of a product. Well, what I'm, I'm looking at is I just noticed, I, I just looking through all the possible elder care uh, groups that are out there. One is Visiting right. Angels, right. I have no uh, connection with them. But visiting angels, maybe my grandchildren can get certified as visiting angels, yes. live in my extra yes. bedroom. Yes, can. That can be part of the long-term yes, care right. uh, hiring of people to help you at right. assisted home living. Exactly I love right. all that. Oh, yeah. That's right. And, of course, it's a great, it's a great benefit. You know, mm. So, really, that's a discussion, we, a strategy that we mm. have with every one of our clients. Now, guess what? Is it for everyone? No. Mm. But guess what? It's worth a discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the idea of... I don't want to spend down my money. No. And most of us, we're going to live longer, so we may need that money. Right. So I don't want to be spending money on strictly elder care and medical costs, which is, by the way, the, the biggest, next to taxes, the biggest cost you're going to have any time in your uh, retirement. Now, I, I noticed also uh, that people, you know, if I can't get in, a, it's, uh, sometimes I'm, I, by the time I get to people, they're in their late 70s. Uh, I don't even know the annuity with the long-term care rider is going to work. I really don't know if the math is going to work with the life insurance. Right. I've noticed that some people are using uh, an appreciating mortgage uh, kind of as a backstop. It's sure. they're not going to use it, sure but it if is. they could, but if they have to do it and it's sure. their last resource, they could tap it. Well, it really can. And there's there's some strategies out there that I think that really everybody should look at mm -hmm. in using that. Because think about this, you know, you have a home, and of course, let's just say more than likely your home's paid for. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? When you pass away, do your kids want the home or do they, will they have money? Well, guess what? Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. My kids, neither one of my sons want to move back into a home where, where, mm -hmm. where they were raised. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there's another advantage of looking at, looking at a, uh, the value of your home mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I'm thinking if I have the value of my home, I want to use it as a living benefit for the person in retirement. Exactly. I don't, that you're exactly. really not making money on giving dollar for dollar value of right. your home equity right. to your heirs. Right. Really, no, I mean, not. you're not making anything. It's just no, dollar for no. dollar. No, that's right. So that's, a, that, that's another technique. Okay, so, so based on what we're talking about in the first segment, I want to be careful. I want to be careful. I don't want to spend down my assets. If I qualify for long-term care, great. If I qualify for the two hybrid, a new to your life, great, or maybe even having a backup position right. in my equity. Well, that's our show for this week. I want to thank Steve Bishop for being on my show and being my very special guest. But before I go, remember what the good Reverend John Wesley once said, make all you can, give all you can, save all you can. I'm Steve Savant. See you next week right here on Right in the Money.
For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting. We have the interviews you can use.